cruising with my chin up so high, facing towards the blue sky. Cause we can choose to surf the waves that come as long as we are consciously grateful for each and every one. All right, what's going on guys? My name is Ted Carr and you are tuned in to Fruit Living. And on this channel, I talk about fruits, minimalism, raw veganism, no fap, living your ultimate ideal lifestyle and uh, things of that positive nature. And in this video, in this episode, we're gonna be chit-chatting about transitioning from a regular standard North American diet or even just a cooked vegan diet all the way over to a raw vegan diet, 100% raw vegan diet. What does that transition look like? Should you do it overnight? Should you do it over a period of time? What are some things that can make that transition a bit easier? And what are some of the symptoms and side effects that you may experience along the way? So without further ado, let's get right into it. Right off the bat, here we are. My personal transition looks something like this. I started out eating a North American diet, high protein, and then I realized, wow, there's something else out there. There's something else that's called vegetarian, and people go vegetarian for certain benefits. And if they're getting all these benefits from being vegetarian, why don't I try it as well? So I cut out red meat, and then I cut out chicken, and then I cut out fish, one after the other. And then finally, I was vegetarian. And I felt good. My consciousness felt good. I didn't feel guilty when I was eating food, and I just felt like I knew something that other people didn't know. And that's always kind of fun when you're young and teenager, and you're like, oh my god, I know something the world doesn't know. You feel uh, all high and mighty. And then... I went from being vegetarian to being vegan for the exact same reason. I found out that, hey, all these people are going vegan for benefits. In fact, I even went on YouTube and typed in famous vegan celebrities. And these videos came up with all these famous vegan celebrities and it just inspired me so much to be vegan. And I was like, wow, if they're being vegan for all these benefits and their life is like amazing because they're freaking celebrities, why wouldn't I go vegan now as well? It's a really simple change. All I gotta do is cut out eggs and dairy and I'm pretty much there. So I did that. First I cut out eggs and then I cut out all milk and cheese products. So it was a gradual transition, but it happened over the course of maybe a few weeks. I didn't give myself a hard time if I ever slipped up and had something that had eggs in it or slipped up and had something that had milk in it or you know something that said may contain dairy or may contain lactose or whatever. I didn't beat myself up over it. I was just, I just thought I was way ahead of the game anyway as it is already being vegetarian than already being mostly vegan. If I slipped up and had a little bit of dairy every now and then, it wasn't a big deal, but I learned from every mistake I made. In life, we either win or we learn. And every time I slipped up and failed or made a mistake, I learned from it big time. Didn't beat myself up, didn't beat myself up over it at all. And then I found out about raw veganism. So I was getting all these benefits from being vegan, way more benefits from being vegan than I got from being vegetarian. And I was thinking, wow, my diet hasn't really changed so much since being vegan and being vegetarian. The only thing I cut out was dairy and eggs. And yet I feel so much better. But what if I cut out like everything except raw fruits and vegetables and nuts and seeds, just like raw living foods? Now that makes sense. Sounds drastic, sounds extreme, but I'm an extreme person. I like to go all the way, I like to go all in on, on something if I know it's, if it's good for me. So I, I did that. But I did it one food at a time as well because I tried to go overnight. I was like, I'm doing raw, baby. And uh, I felt like crap because I was eating such high fat. I was eating so many nuts and seeds, so many avocados and olives combined. And uh, mixing that with like honey and mixing that with like things that I thought were raw, like freaking cashews and whatnot on top of like, and then putting like some orange juice and oranges on top of that. Like just food combining was terrible when I went raw vegan. But then I learned about food combining and I learned about simplifying your diet and meals into mono meals. And I learned about you know, focusing on the juicy fruits. And I learned about cutting out the nuts and seeds all together eventually. This took time. But on the days that I went like 100% raw, it wasn't long before I then slipped up and then had some cooked food again. When I didn't want to be having the cooked food. Cooked food had like this pull on me in the same way that marijuana had this pull on me. Like when I quit smoking marijuana or weed, I was like, no more weed. And then like the next night I was smoking it. And I was like, God damn. All right, no more weed. And then the next night, smoking it again. I was like, why can't I just quit this? I don't even want to smoke it. And I wake up the next morning, like, all right, today's the day. No marijuana. And then later that night, I'm like, dude, it's like nine o'clock. I'm home alone. I might as well get baked. So I turn on the vaporizer and then get baked. But I transitioned from smoking weed to vaporizing weed and then I cut it all together. And then 
with cooked food, I transitioned from eating like cooked food every single day to then eating it every now and then. So I was slowly cutting it out of my diet. I didn't go raw 100% overnight and succeed with that. I tried with that, but I just couldn't do it. I kept slipping up. And it was here that I, I, I was kind of rough on myself. Whenever I did slip up, I like binged on it. I was like, oh my God, what an idiot. You're such a fucking loser binging on cooked food. Like, look at you drug addict. And I just was going hard on the cooked food until I felt like crap. So that's what my transition kind of looked like. I just like kind of pushed myself over the edge to, to make raw work. And then uh, I just found a lot of similarities between cooked food and marijuana and even marijuana and nicotine and cooked food and nicotine when I was trying to quit nicotine in college. It's just, it's something that I didn't want to consume, but I just, I was like possessed to go consume it. So from that, from those days on, I, I, every time I look at cooked food, I'm like, is it really a food? Like, cause I don't treat it as a food. I treat it as a drug. I know some people treat, you know, cooked food totally fine. They're sane with it. They don't go overboard with it. But, um, even, even them and even most people, they have a tough time going like 14 days, hundred percent raw. These cooked food cravings, they just come back. And uh, like I said, if you know how to handle your cooked food, you don't overdo it, then I guess you're fine. But I just wanted to be 100% raw to totally clear my acne and like totally just feel purified and detoxed and cleansed. So um, I just stuck with it. I tried raw and tried raw and tried raw. Every time I fell off, I got back on track and tried raw, tried raw. And then months go by and I'm finally in the clear. I'd say like freaking like 15, 16 months went by, over a year and a half of, of um, trying to like, stick raw 100%. So. Um, I've been on the raw path for over eight years now, but the first year and a half, two years, it was a bit rocky. I slipped up every now and then, and I slipped up hard. Like, I would go all in on the cooked food, and I'd make myself feel like crap. But uh, whenever I would go back to raw, I felt amazing. I was like, wow, raw is like, it's always there for me. It always feels good. It's always, uh, it's always a treat. It's always innocent. There's no strings attached whenever I come back to eat raw. I always feel light. I always feel fresh and hydrated when I eat raw. I never feel fatigued after a meal of raw. And then um, for some reasons I would find myself going back to cook food. I'd be in that lower state, that lower vibe. Be stressed out or worried about something maybe or just hadn't eaten enough for whatever reason so I was low in calories. And then boom, I'd eat the cooked food and be like boom, I would learn from that lower vibrational state. And I was like, I just don't want to be in this low vibrational state. And I just gotta do what I can to stay the course and be raw. And so my transition, it was just like, a lot of trial and error, a lot of consuming people's content on YouTube, like watching other raw vegans, their interviews and learning from them. And not many people talk about, not many people spoke about the addictive nature of cooked food. I was um, surprised by that. So um, I kind of felt alone in my addiction to cooked food. And uh, it was pretty tough. When you feel like you're alone, you're the only person in the world who's dealing with what you're dealing, dealing with, that's kind of tough. Once you find other people who are dealing with it, it's not, it's not as bad. You're like, hey, you know what? We're all in this together. So now, since talking about it on YouTube openly, I've gotten a lot of Snapchats from people and Instagram messages from people and Facebook messages and people come up to me in person and say, Ted, thank you for you know, acknowledging how addictive cooked food can be. And I've run support groups like Alcoholics Anonymous type groups at these fruit festivals and people just unleash, man. People just like break down and um, you know, expose their, their deepest, darkest, darkest selves in these support groups explaining how they just go, they binge out on these cookies, they binge out on these bags of chips and they just can't help it, they just can't stop. They'll go, they'll go drive like two hours out of town so no one's around to see them and they just eat, 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 eat and they just feel like absolute crap but they just do what they can to get that fix of their cooked food. Um, so now that this message is out there, now that more people know about the addictive nature that cooked food can be, um, the raw, the people who are doing raw now, they uh, they know that they're not the only ones, hopefully. Um, now this is a bit off topic of talking about my transition, but I think it's important to acknowledge the fact that some people, they can have this backlash of um, addictive tendencies to cook food. So uh, it's a big reason why people don't successfully transition to raw. They, they, they try it, they feel the addictive tendencies again, and then they go back to, to cook and they never attempt raw again. But, uh, yeah, it's there, it's real for some people. Not all people, but it's there for some people. And one final note I wanna say here before this video ends is when you start eating raw food, it's really hard to get in all the calories because your stomach is so used to being small from the cooked food. Your stomach only needs to be this big to fit in all the calories from cooked food. Once you start eating raw, your stomach has to expand to fit in all, those, all the calories because you're eating the same amount of calories perhaps, but your stomach needs to expand because raw food is the volume is so much higher. 
the volume is so much higher. A freaking head of iceberg lettuce is this big. Right? Iceberg lettuce is like this big and it has like 50 calories. But if you had this much rice, you'd have like freaking a thousand calories. So if your stomach is used to getting a thousand calories, it only used to grow this big, but then you come over to raw and you eat the same amount of volume, but you're only getting 50 calories, your body's like, dude, we need the calories. So you start looking for more denser foods. So I would recommend grazing throughout the day so you're always trickling in the calories. I would recommend going for the denser foods initially to help you, you know, get away from uh, some of the cooked stuff. I'd focus on things like the avocados, the bananas, the, the blended dates, the blended raisins. I say blended dates and raisins because it's best to rehydrate your dried fruits. If you just eat them on their own, they can really muck up your teeth, they can get stuck in there, and they can make you feel like crap because they just dehydrate you. So I recommend soaking your dried fruits and blending them up. Um, I suggest focusing on foods like cantaloupe and mangoes and uh, foods that are really going to fill you up, you know. People say like, oh, I, I just can't fill up on, on raw. And well, that's because like you're not used to eating enough. Your stomach isn't big enough to accommodate enough food. So when I sit down with someone at a raw meal, I can pound back like five or six papayas. And I'm like, oh, I'm really full. But at that point, my stomach's like sticking out. I'm like, I'm, I'm full. I'm set, I'm satisfied, I'm good to go for like another three, four hours. But they sit down, they have one or two papayas, and they're like, oh, I'm full. And they're like, but how come like 45 minutes later I'm hungry again? It's because you only ate two papayas, I just had six or eight, right? So this, this expansion of your stomach can, can take time, it can take months to really uh, adapt so that you're able to get in the calories. So take your time with transitioning, cut out one food at a time like I did. I would pick one food and I would say, you know what, no more Skittles. No more Mars bars, no more white rice, no more white potatoes. I would just go one food at a time. And uh, the last time I ever had a certain food, I would, I would acknowledge that. Like, this is the last time I ever have Skittles because I see it has gelatin in it. I see it's not vegan, but I'm going to have it anyway. Boom, 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 smash it down, never have it again. It's where my mother's life. And even as recently as like a, maybe a year and a half ago in Thailand, I had some deep fried durian chips. Those were definitely not raw. I thought they were just dried durian chips because that's what they said. And uh, I had some, I'm like, wow, these are insanely good. And then I'm eating a bit more. I'm like, no, instantly I felt the trigger come on. I'm like, these have to be cooked. And I look closely, they're like covered in oil, covered in salt. Then I go to like to the farmer's market, maybe a week or so later, I see them being deep fried in oil. I'm like, no wonder, man, those things were like crack. And, uh, I had a binge on those, man. I had a binge on those. I couldn't help myself at that point. I just, I was like, fuck it. I'm going all in on these durian chips. I'm going to see how they make me feel. Oh, they made me feel like crap. I ended up going back and buying like a huge box, eating like half of it, feeling like I'm going to vomit. So I went downstairs to my hotel room, gave it to the girls at the front desk. I'm like, here, get this out of my face. You enjoy it. And um, enjoy it. They did. But uh, yeah, I was like, I swear my mother's life. I will never have those durian chips ever again. And since then, I've been traveling through the airports in Thailand, and I've seen these dried durian chips. I'm like, I'm pretty hungry, but I see those durian chips. I'm like, those are not a food option. That is a freaking drug, man. You want to suppress your appetite with drugs, you can go ahead and do that, but don't call it food. That stuff is like crack cocaine, man. In fact, crack cocaine doesn't even compare to the addictive tendencies of freaking cooked food, man, for, for me. Um, especially those durian chips, deep fried durian chips. It's no wonder people are obese, man. They're just hooked on this greasy ass stuff. So anyways, I just want to say, give yourself time when you're transitioning. It might take a year or two to really get it down pat and um, allow yourself to have whatever cooked food you want to have. And then just when you're ready for it, say, all right, this is the last time I ever eat this particular cooked food. And then you just go back to focusing on the fruit. You focus on the sweet and juicy fruit. Focus on the papayas and the mangoes and the peaches, the plums, the nectarines, the berries, the cantaloupe, the watermelon, the banana smoothies, the uh, spinach lettuce, your favorite raw foods, the celery, focus on these things and you'll be all right. And if you want some, you know, personal attention, maybe consider getting some coaching. I offer coaching as well. If you check the description in the um, YouTube description box below, you'll see a link for my Skype coaching. But I'm not the only one who offers it. I got friends like Chris Kendall who offers Skype coaching as well. I think um, this is a bunch of people who offer Skype coaching, man. Just find out your favorite YouTuber and then send them a message and be like, hey, how much you charge for an hour of Skype coaching? And then just get a few sessions. Don't just get one session because once is never enough. It's like eating an apple once and thinking, oh, I'm going to be healthy now. You got to eat apples like every freaking day at the exclusion of eating junk food if you want those apples to really have their positive effect. So same with Skype coaching. Same with anything you do that's healthy. If you go to the gym once, you're not going to get fit. But if you go to the gym every single day at the exclusion of lazing around and watching TV, 
then uh, you'll get the benefits from going to the gym. So, yeah, focus on what you want. You're gonna get more of it. Most people are so scatterbrained, they focus on a whole bunch of different things. But stay locked in on diet if that's what you want to improve, and improve it you will. Stay locked in on fitness if you want to improve it, and improve it you will. Stay locked in and focus on one area of your life and improve it you will. All right, peace out from Hilo, Hawaii. Thanks so much for watching. Any questions, let me know in the comments below. I'll do my best to get to you. But um, I'm definitely better at replying to people via Snapchat. So hit me up at Ted Carr on Snapchat, and I'll see you there. Peace. Cruising with my chin up so high Facing towards the blue sky Cause we can choose to surf the waves that come As long as we are consciously grateful for each and every one There's essence in the guessing game and lessons in the quest of fame So what you gonna do when the lights turn on you Take me high, take me low